roughly a third to a half of the galaxies that are in the sky are spiral galaxies. Some spiral galaxies look like this, where the spiral kind of looks like an S. So these galaxies are called S-wise galaxies. If you look at the exact same galaxy from the other side, now the arms are winding in the opposite direction. It looks a little bit like a Z. So these are called Z-wise spirals, and these are S-wise spirals. We need to have objective statistics, for example, on how many galaxies in the sky wind S-wise versus Z-wise. And there's also many other interesting statistics you can measure about spiral galaxies, like the number of arms. These, this one here has two arms, but you can also have three, four, five, six, any number of arms. So the thickness of the arms, the length of the arms, sometimes the arms have various colors. All of that is stuff that can't be analyzed without automating the entire process by computer. Astronomers were so desperate for this kind of statistical information, they finally gave up and said, look, a six-year-old kid could tell us which way the arms wind, and we still can't write a computer program to do it. So in 2006, they created this website, galaxyzoo.org, where anybody with about five minutes of training could learn to classify galaxies in a way that was useful for astronomers. Well, over the next few years, 250,000 people volunteered to classify galaxies on this website. So the Galaxy Zoo has been around for eight years now. About f uh, six years ago, a, a new graduate student came here into the computer science department. His name was Darren Davis, and he was interested in astronomy. And we decided that now computer vision algorithms were good enough that we could start applying to this problem. And we ended up collaborating with the astronomers of Galaxy Zoo, and they helped us understand what aspects of spiral galaxies were most important to classify for our automatic program. Uh, but now we have this, this automatic computer program that can look at a picture of a spiral galaxy and tell the astronomers on the image exactly where the arms are. It's called Sparkfire, by the way. The, our, our code is called Sparkfire. The astronomers, who are the real scientists here, will go and decompose the galaxy into individual arms and do whatever analysis they want to do on the image because we can tell them where the arms are. We pull out about 150 different statistics about every spiral galaxy that we look at. And there's about a million images of spiral galaxies that we can see um, in the sky. So one of the most basic questions you can ask is like I alluded to at the beginning, do we see an equal number of Zy's versus Sy's? There's, be about, you know, there's about a million galaxies out there. Do we expect you know, about 500,000 of each? It turns out that humans have a bias. If you use the Galaxy Zoo data even if it turns out that the real answer should be exactly 50%, about 57% of people will choose Z-wise. So Darren, now with this computer program, we now have a completely unbiased measure of the winding direction of galaxies among many other statistics. And now it turns out that, yeah, it's pretty much exactly 50% wind one way and 50% wind the other way. The goal of science really is to create predictive theories. Right? That's why NASA can send space probes to Mars and Jupiter and Pluto, because we understand gravity so well that we can make predictions about where the planets are going to be and where the spacecraft are going to go. We don't yet have a predictive theory of spiral galaxies. Astronomers can do simulations of galaxies, but we still don't understand all the mechanisms behind how the arms actually form. So one of the things that Sparkfire is going to allow us to do is now we can compare the images of the simulated galaxies to images of real galaxies and see how they differ. So what Sparkfire is really enabling in the long run is for astronomers to be able to make predictions of how the spiral arms form and then compare those predictions to images of real galaxies and see how close they can make them match. NASA and the European Space Agency are now working together to launch a spacecraft that's going to, to look at the entire sky at the same resolution as the Hubble Space Telescope. And there's approximately 10, somewhere between 10 and 100 trillion galaxies in the sky at the resolution that you'll be able to see from space. Now, even a quarter million volunteers in the Galaxy Zoo is not enough people to look at a trillion galaxies. We wrote the computer program that finally allows astronomers to perform real science on, on spiral galaxies.